since you've been gone. Things have gotten much worse. Samuel L. Jackson, what is Nick Fury's mindset when he returns from his job in space? He's not coming home from his job in space. He's just kind of out there, kind of hiding out and being at Sabre and doing whatever it is he can do to keep from thinking about what's going on down there or what happened before, you know, he came up to Sabre and stayed after he got blipped out. You were never the same after the blip. You always told me there is no shame in walking away when the steps are uncertain. So check your footing. Him coming back, you know, is a really serious kind of crisis going on down there that he finally has to face and deal with. This is personal. Sonya's got a good idea about what's going on, but and there's not a lot of people out there that know that, you know, the scrolls are down there. It's been a minute since Talos and Nick Fury first met back in the 1990s. What's the mood like when Fury decides to uh, pay us a visit from space? Yeah, exactly, right? Exactly. <laughs> it's like, you know, lover, lover, where have you been? You know, I think it's very strained. And I think, you know, like from, from Talos's point of view, man, you really know how to drop the ball, don't you? I mean, you all that, right? But wow, wow. And I think that's an amazing place for the MCU to sort of decide, okay, we're gonna take this situation, we're gonna introduce characters with this much sort of potency and drive and uh, impact, and we're gonna have him, the mighty, mighty man himself as a great cultural entity, and also within the MCU. But boy, you're not looking so good right now, are you? Amelia, talk about the dynamic between Gaia and her father when they eventually run into each other. Yeah, so it's a strained relationship <laughs> that um, is, at, in one instance, incredibly relatable to viewers. But put on top of that a real moral question, the summation of those parts turns into our dynamic it's got a level of urgency in a grander sense, but it's also just a father and a daughter having it out, realizing the differences, realizing the, the estrangement, the gap between them, what it's been, what it means, how much hurt is there. And that makes for some really interesting scenes, I think. And also this guy, the living legend, sat next to me. I mean, come on. You're in no shape for this fight that lies before us, old friend. Olivia, tell us about MI6 agent Sonia, who I think Sam has described as the most dangerous woman in the UK. <laughs> I love that. Um, I think she's a she's a pussycat deep down. I think. Uh, <laughs> um, Very long talent. <laughs> she's a funny old fish. I love her. And you seem to be having a blast playing I'm her. Having such fun playing her. She's funny and cruel and loyal and. Uh, I wonder what she was like as a child. I wonder if she had any friends. So tell us about Gravik, the rebel scroll leader, and what exactly he wants and what he's gonna do to get it. I think he wants to see the destruction of everything and gaining as much power and control as possible along the way. Trusts no one, hates everyone and everything. We meet him when he's arrived at that place and we get to understand like why and and how he's got there. Would you say he's ruthless? Yeah, I'd say he's a sociopath. There's no line for him. He's crossed it. He's, he's so far gone. I don't know what you'd have to do to bring him back. This is a guy who not only wants to cause chaos, but he wants Nick and Talos to see it as it's happening. And he wants them to know that it's him who is doing it and that to me was part of a huge part of the complexity i was like he's not just trying to blow stuff up he wants to do it as they're seeing it and he wants to see them see it and he wants to see them see him as he's doing it and i was like ben you've done a couple of movies obviously as talos what about the TV experience of doing Secret Invasion most surprised you? The great advantage of the streaming full stop is it shifts much more deeply into a writer's medium, right? So you have the ability to really get into things and flesh them out more. 
What I think was the great delight is the balancing act that a company and a, people like Marvel are able to achieve, which is to have sort of smart, very, you know, ad hoc concept sort of stuff and just to get deeper and more sustained in it without dropping the ball of being entertaining. You know, we get to a point where you will see them in that kind of mode where they once were. But, you know, they've got to go through a lot. I mean, man, man, man. We have a cast of characters that can hold their own if necessary in any of the situations that they're put in. I didn't know about Olivia until she showed up and it was kind of like, what? I'm getting that? Okay, great. And to finally read a scene that, you know, Don and I get to do together was really wonderful. The kind of conversations that I have with Ben as Talos uh, turn out to be really, really great. And the kinds of things that we, uh, the kind of enmity that we create that, you know, friends have that fall out and then have to fall back in or the kind of apologies that I have to give to him because I've said some things that are very toxic to a relationship uh, are very real kinds of things that, you know, people have to deal with. So the real world problems of these people in an extraordinary situation are the things that, you know, make this interesting, that make people want to stay around and watch it. You know, how are they going to solve this without those super people? Because we don't need them, because they're real human issues mm. that we're dealing with. We're dealing with, you know, prejudice. We're dealing with uh, uh, people's fears of people taking over their uh, space or invading their space, knowing that, you know, there are some people around you that you can't identify because they can look like you uh, and they're not like you. Uh, knowing that there's a geopolitical problem that's trying to be solved and who are the real people or who are the, the fake people and who are your real friends that can help you or are these people actually your friends? So they're real problems that people can sit there and watch and not feel like, oh, I couldn't be part of this or I can't fly or I can't make spark come out of my eyes and do stuff. We don't need that. You know, we're dealing with something that needs to be dealt with on a human level uh, by real humans.